Before we begin, product provided by Square Enix. Welcome to Voice of Cards, the Forsaken Maiden. Yep, Square Enix, as well as Alum. I need to get my hands on the first one. This is Voice of Cards, The Forsaken Maiden. And before we begin, let's check out the options. You have your game settings. All right, have it in red text, shadows. I'll have it on normal speed. You can also customize your avatar, your card face, card back. Yeah, implement it. You also have your battle board, tables, your dice, as well as background music. You also have your language. I'll have it set the louder. That way you guys can hear. Allow me to welcome you to the world of voice of cards. You have your different languages, voice languages. Having subtitles on by default, which is nice. Alright, so now that we got that, let's begin! Really like the load time for it. Shuffling the deck. Yeah, and you press buttons and you cause the cause the deck shuffle. Ah, I bid you welcome. I shall be your game master for this tale. It is a pleasure to have you. Now then. Just like this, I will be using cards to draw you into the world of this story. A man proclaiming himself to be a great hero has embarked on a journey to slay the dragon. From time to time, you may be presented with choices like this. That's correct. It doesn't mean anything, but still, good job. Okay. You're following along with all this, I trust? Moving on. I believe your experience of the story will be shaped in no small part by my narration. As such, I hope you'll have rather more fun keeping the sound on while you play. That said, rest assured that the game remains enjoyable without sound. My words will be subtitled just as they are now. Yes, we already have subtitles on. With the formality sorted, we're all ready to begin the game. My, my. Yeah, you can hear the sound of the waves. Oh, how very evocative. <laughs> now then, let's begin our tale. <clears throat> Allow me to welcome you to the world of Voice of Cards. You are about to step into the shoes of the hero of this tale as he sets forth on a grand adventure. Said adventure takes place in a remote part of the sea, in which ancient traditions are alive and well. You will touch the hearts of many who dwell in this place as you journey to change fate's promise of untold ruin. I believe in you. I believe your journey will be a success. And on that note, it is time for that journey to begin. 
May the waves see you safely across the tides. Our story begins in a secluded grotto. The sound of the waves echoes softly across the rock walls. A solitary young man stands in front of a ship floating in the water. Brush in hand, he busies himself painting the vessel. Once he finishes his work, he decides to carve his name into the side of the hull. A finishing touch. Carve the shipwright's name. I christen it. The Altalir. Yeah, I christen the ship the Altalir. Yes. You carve your name in small lettering into the ship. Oh, a handsome name, that. This young lad is the hero of our tale, and your window into the world. You're a navigator without a ship, and your soul yearns to set out upon the ocean blue for your own reasons. You have spent a great deal of time repairing the wrecked ship before you in the hopes of crafting a partner aboard which you might sail the high seas. The sound of a wooden box tumbling to the ground rips through the grotto. You heave a deep sigh and decide to head over to the source of the racket. I see. Find whatever made that noise. Your piece is the middle. Use the left stick to move in the direction you want. As you continue on your journey, your objective will change. Press the X button whenever you need a reminder of what to do next. You will see cards with glowing edge. Step on or want to trigger an event that will move the story along. The source of the noise turns out to be a young girl. It looks as though she has knocked over a wooden box, packed with shipbuilding supplies, and is in quite a panic about it. The girl's name is Laddie. You came across her some time ago, collapsed on a beach. You attempted to bring her to a nearby village, but she was quite opposed to the idea for some reason. As such, she has been helping you repair the ship here. You're not quite sure how to respond to her knocking the box over. What do I say to her? I say it's okay. It's okay, you say in a gentle, reassuring tone. Laddie's worried expression melts away, replaced by one of relief. You move to leave the grotto, saying, I'm going to the village to get some food. Laddie waves goodbye, her forlorn smile seeing you off. The young woman has lost her ability to speak. Neither of you have any knowledge of how she ended up in her situation, and you spend many quiet hours together in the grotto. The scent of the sea and a sense of isolation hang heavy in the air. The island is bound for ruin and has had its name since before any can really recall. This is Omega Isle. You take a deep breath and then set out for the nearby Omega Village, which shares the island's name. Make your way east of the secret grotto to Omega Village. Press the plus button to open the menu. There you can perform various actions such as saving and changing skills or equipment. Let's save to be safe. And this is your party. This is your character, your setup, own cards, collection, data, save. There are three save files. That is actually pretty awesome.
An this... old spire stands tall before you. Alas, there's little reason to go poking around within. Oh, a spire, huh? Alas, there's little reason to go poking around. You have arrived near the entrance of the village. You spy a shadow skulking about in the midst of a thicket. The shadows fall away to reveal a small monster. It's unusual to see one this close to the village. It might be cute, but it's still a monster and a threat. You must slay the beast before it can cause trouble or worse in the village. Now we're getting to the battle system. This is so unique. And I'm a sucker for Don't RPGs. Back. Oh, I'm not. Take down all the enemies and victory will be yours. All right, we have stab, air thrust, and charge. Let's charge. More gems means more opportunities. You hit me for one gem. That's you. Roll the A button to calculate damage. That's a six. Really? I missed? Fine, I'll just stab you instead. Like that. Nice, we get 15 experience and 12 gold. Enter Omega Village. Gorgeous flower beds burst with blossoms that will one day wilt and wither away, much like Omega Village itself. This is a village that has accepted its fate to be but a moment in time, destined to fade. Make your way to the home of the mayor. An island in want of a maiden shall fall, he mutters, to no one in particular. We fill the necessary requirements and unlock the age man's flip side story. This might be the last time I see this flower bed, the boy says, gazing forlornly at the flowers. Nice. I wish I got to be the maiden, the girl says mournfully, dressed head to toe in maiden garb and clearly pretending to be such. A lone woman diligently cleans the grounds of the maiden shrine. Interesting. The windows are closed, and it's too dark to see much inside. All sound seems to fall away. Stop in at the mayor's house and discover that he already has a guest. The two are engaged in discussion. You listen in and learn that they are troubled by monsters that have appeared near the village and have been devouring precious stores of food. The villager sighs deeply. I suppose it's about the end for the village, they say flatly before departing the mayor's home. The man left standing in the room has a certain sagacity about him. 
He notices you waiting and inclines his head in greeting. His name is Grief. As the village's mayor, he spends his days dealing with all manner of happenings around town. He looks to be at a loss over the damage being caused by the monsters. It would likely be a simple matter for you to deal with the beasts. Nah, I'll accept the gig. You offer to deal with the monsters, and Greeth replies with his thanks. You're always a big help. This is part of your daily routine. You work to sort out the village's troubles in order to procure food to eat. Red Omega Village and the surrounding environs of monsters. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. Well, it looks like we're not going to get much for the time being. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. Weapon, armor, and accessory cards are only effective once you equip them. Open the menu, select the equipment, and make sure your party is ready for battle. A monster has appeared before you. It holds what's left of a piece of fruit in its teeth, and its mouth moves restlessly. With a sigh, you mutter, let's get this over with then, and ready your weapon. Let's go. Hope you win. When a card's HP drops to zero, it becomes incapacitated. Guard's attack is indicated lower left, defense lower right. Give careful consideration to you and your opponent's values before acting. That does it for battle basics. The rest is up to us. Okay, now we get a critical. Magnificent. A one? Yeah, when I rolled a six, I didn't do squat. Nice, your level up, level two. With practice skill, you swing your weapon. The blade flashes through the monster's throat. Merciless, perfect aim. It would appear that you are quite accustomed to killing. You wipe the blood off your weapon. As you do, you notice a shadow in the distance. Another monster, perhaps? Time to go in close for the kill. Silently, you creep up on the shadow and bring your blade down on it with practice speed. But the shadow nimbly evades your strike and runs off. Whatever the shadow was, it was taken aback by your unexpected assault. It looks like it ran off in the direction of the spire near the village. And we just spotted that spire, too. Either when you used the healing item or rested your home in the village. This is actually pretty interesting, if I do say so myself. Oh, 
Oh, he's already fully healed. Let us enter the spirit spire. You stand before the spirit spire, said to have been erected to protect the island. Yet with the villagers having accepted ruination, it now stands forlorn, an edifice without a purpose. This place, so named for the spirits themselves, is one that the villagers do not enter. Despite this, you say to yourself, I have to get rid of the monster and decide to profane the place with your presence. Hunt down the monster that retreated into the spirit spire. There are some words etched into the door, but they are weathered and difficult to read. Worried though you are about whatever the words might say, you nonetheless try pushing the handle. With some protest, the door groans open. You spy the shadow of the monster you had countered earlier. Your insight that it had taken refuge in the spire has proven a good one. The shadow notices your presence and flies off at blinding speed. You can't help but admire the rapid escape, though it looks like you're back to chasing after a shadow. Go figure. Now we need to find it. Second floor. You survey your surroundings, relying on the shafts of sunlight filtering in through the windows. However, you're unable to see the monster from where you are. Now we need to find it. There's the altar. In the back of the large hall, there is an altar, which evinces a sense of deep mystery. The altar is wrought of a strange kind of stone, its surface polished smooth. It looks as though it's meant for use in some important ritual. You approach the altar to check that there are no places for monsters to hide themselves away inside it. In reply to the mysterious and unidentifiable voice that suddenly rent the silence, you ask in a sharp tone, Who's there? You strain your ears, trying to make out the broken snippets of words echoing off the chamber walls. After speaking a word that rings familiar to your ears, Laddie, the voice becomes impossible to hear. It cannot be. Could you truly have heard the voice of the spirit from the maiden's myth passed down on the island? All signs of the monster you were in pursuit of seem to have vanished. For the time being, 
you decide to return to the village and report your success. Huh, what in the world could that voice have been? Inform the mayor of Omega Village the monsters have been vanquished. Well, I guess there's not much else. And fight. These are gems. You need to spend them to use certain skills. You gain one gem whenever you take an action and restore up to ten at a time. The icon indicates how many gems a skill costs. You can't use a skill if you don't have enough gems. A three. Some of your attacks are elemental in nature. The six elements are fire, water, bolt, wind, light, and dark. Cards take more damage from elements they are weak to, and less damage from elements they're resistant against. Knowing your enemy's weaknesses and strengths will help you choose which skills to wield in your advantage to your advantage. And that deals with that. He's now level three. And earns try attack. Now it's out of the mayor's home. When you arrive at the mayor's house, there is a young visitor already there. She looks to be making an impassioned request of Grief. In a wearied voice, Grief replies, There is no longer any maiden in our village. Admonished, the girl leaves the house with disappointment written across her expression. You inform the mayor that you've taken care of the monsters around town. As thanks for completing the job, the mayor hands you a basket of fruit. Oh, good, you think to yourself. Another day, another basket of fruit. Now we gotta return the grotto. As you encounter various cards during your adventure, they're added to your collection in the menu. You can read special stories about the characters and enemies among your collected cards. Progress through the adventure and defeat the myriad enemies in your path to collect every special story. No. Let me see, do I have enough money? I only have 248. Anyway... Oh, well, I can at least get some iron armor. That made it satisfactory. Not a solve what I don't need.
There you go. Don't mind the noise. Also, don't mind my mom. You can now jump over to upward facing terrain. Use the right stick to choose in the direction and press the A button. Try jumping to the secret grotto. Ah, that speeds things up. You re-enter the grotto and announce your return. On a normal day, Laddie would already have zipped over to greet you. But today, nothing. You walk over to Laddie and discover that she is sound asleep. Life in the grotto is not one of creature comforts. Rather, a fair few inconveniences. You've tried several times to bring Laddie to the village, but she was adamantly opposed on every occasion. You sometimes catch glimpses of her face while she sleeps. Always it is contorted in anguish as though she is in the throes of a terrible nightmare. You notice a bulky book lying open next to Laddie, filled with carefully drawn words and images. It seems to be some kind of picture book that Laddie made herself. You know, I confess, I am a bit curious. Unable to overcome your curiosity, you decide to take a look at the picture book. Beside evocative images of deep forests and towering mountain ranges, Laddie has written a story patterned after the maiden's myth. The picture book story is set in a small village replete with nature. The village enjoys the promise of peace and tranquility thanks to the young woman born to be the maiden. The maiden goes before the altar to perform a ritual, which invokes the power of a great spirit to protect the village. You look over the artwork, a spitting recreation of the altar you saw in the spire, and think back on the mysterious voice. The voice claimed it was a spirit, and you're certain it spoke Laddie's name. You are so caught up in the thoughts racing through your head that you fail to notice Laddie had awakened. Laddie seems embarrassed that you've seen her book. Tears prick the corners of her eyes. If Laddie were indeed the maiden, it would be no exaggeration to call her the very light of hope, a protective force that could save the island from its encroaching ruin. With faint expectation tightening your chest, you consider taking her to the altar in the spire. Now we gotta speak to her. You've given Laddie some of the fruit you brought back. She dreamily stuffs some of it into her mouth. Maybe she likes it. You hope so. Your stomach rumbles as you watch her. And together, the two of you enjoy a light meal. Now she joins our party. Well, ain't that pretty nice. But I swear, this RPG is rather ambitious. 
Ага. Я бы я-то файт. Вау. And that's the end of that. You did great. A good warrior wastes no time. Time ahead of the spire. You take Laddie with you and return to the spire. Her staff. As you approach the entrance of the spire, the staff that Laddie clutches close begins to emit a faint light. Seeing the mysterious light, you are convinced Laddie has a deep connection to the spire. Her expression uneasy. Laddie takes hold of your sleeve with a tentative touch. Now we need to guide her to the altar. Now the second floor. You stand before the altar once more bathed in an air of mysticism. The light emitting from Laddie's staff intensifies, as if indicating its destination. In response to the enigmatic voice, Laddie's staff exudes a dazzling light. A spirit appears right before your eyes. Well, maybe it's a spirit? It's some kind of strange stuffed animal. What is this? The stuffed toy seems to be affecting a voice of considerable gravitas and choking itself in the process. This creature is called Lack. Though you cannot be certain it speaks the truth, it claims to be a spirit. You approach, hoping to ask about the maiden. But with blinding speed, Lack zooms behind Laddie, putting her between you as a shield. You're the one from before, Lack says, quaking. It would appear that you're mistaking the creature for a monster, and doggedly chasing after it has made it rather afraid of you. Anything I can use to make a mess. How about fur? You hold out an offer of reconciliation, and Lack takes it and immediately starts munching away. Between bites, it says, You've got some good taste there. You're not really sure if the make good worked out, but in any event, Lack looks willing to listen to you now. You ask about the maiden once more, and Lack begins to talk a lot. It seems to enjoy doing so. Just as the maiden's myth handed down amongst the denizens of the island suggests, it explains, Laddie was indeed born to be the maiden here. However, she was unable to take up her role this has caused no small amount of distress over the island's inevitable destiny to sink beneath the raging waves. Lack concludes with a proposal. How's about you go and meet with the other maidens and fetch the maidens' relics? As you had hoped, Laddie appears to be the key to the island's salvation. Ask what Lack means in Greek. 
green details. Like, say... This island is not the only one home to a spirit. There are islands throughout this archipelago, and upon each dwells one of the four maidens who govern their own spirit. The self-proclaimed spirit explains that if you bring the maiden's relics that each of these maidens possess back to this spire, Laddie will be able to become a maiden herself. Laddie shows the staff in her hand, wearing an expression that seems to say, this is a maiden's relic. Okay. You ask, should we kill the maidens and steal the relics? Laddie shakes her head rapidly, as if to insist that you definitely should not do that. As Lack explains, each maiden has an attendant, an escort, and protector. This would make it difficult to take the relics by brute force. Now what if she becomes a maiden? If Laddie becomes a maiden and performs the maiden's ritual at the altar, the island can be saved. The world-changing immensity of what you have just learned echoes in your mind. It takes you a little while to fully digest it. But it does just so happen you've been readying a seaworthy vessel for your own purposes. You accept Lack's proposal to help Laddie become a maiden. Now Lack has joined our party, forming a team of three. So, um, you want me to poof you back to the entrance? Uh, yes, please. You decide to make for the Spire's exit. Now let's return to the village. Accompanied by your new allies, you make to enter the village. But Laddie seems to find something about this idea disagreeable and clings to a tree nearby, refusing to budge. Oh, I got this one, says Lack, evidently with some kind of plan in mind. The fluffy creature begins to chant a sort of mysterious spell. Suddenly, Laddie's face is transformed into that of an odd old man's. Why would you even do that? Laddie touches her transformed visage and then gives a thumbs up, perhaps as if to say, good job, you are a god. But Laddie looks sideways at you as she walks into the village, her identity now safely hidden. Okay, so what's our objective now? This is your home. A desk pushed up near the wall is adorned with an unfurled map and a scattering of books. The navigation map is of your own design and depicts the various islands in this region of the sea. It contains information on the maidens of those nearby islands, culled meticulously from books and the tales of passing travelers. Before all of this, you had found yourself unable to merely sit and watch the village's decline, and so planned a voyage to seek aid from the maidens of the other islands. After popping into the back room, you emerge with a carefully polished ship's wheel and present it to your companions. It is the final piece of the ship you restored at the grotto. With it, you will finally be able to set sail on the voyage you have dreamed of for so long.
you have made ready for the voyage. But before you set sail, you decide to stop in at the mares to say your farewells. Now we need to make our way to the home of the village's mayor. Greece's eyes fall over the unfamiliar face behind you. And who do we have here? A traveler. You respond. A traveler, weary from a long journey. Grief looks upon her with sympathy. Changing the subject, you explain to the mayor that you'll be leaving the village for a little while on a voyage to save the island. You felt sure that the mayor, with his love of the village, would see you off with a smile. And yet the moment you explain that you found a maiden who can save the island, his attitude changes like the fickle sea winds, and he voices opposition to your journey. Oh, come on! This island is destined to meet its end, he says. You can practically sense him digging his feet in. You cannot fathom why he, the mayor of the village, would believe something like that. Though each of you hold the island in your hearts, you cannot reconcile the difference of opinion. Like lovers going their separate ways after an acrimonious spat, it looks as though you will be setting out on bad terms. You believe that your desire to save the island will prove to be the right perspective. Yep. Not much. It's time for us to get going. And we fight. Let's charge up gems. Five damage. That's how much they delivers. Wow, that's like a sad way to go. Give me that six damage. That's more like it. Ten damage. Good work. She leveled up to level three and gains Thunderbolt. That also leveled up to level three. He gains Surprise. Nice. We fulfill the necessary requirements and unlock the Sea Hare's enemy story. All right. Now it's time to head to our ship. Your ship. Your trusted companion. Once a mere wrecked husk that you labored to bring back to life with months of sweat and toil. You climb up to the stern and with every bit of care you can muster, you attach the wheel. 
the final stroke upon the canvas. At last, your ship is finished. The vessel's design is patterned after a great whale. There are a number of mismatched parts, but that particular quirk only makes you love it all the more. As you look over your handiwork, you realize that your companion on this upcoming journey will need a name. What would a fitting name be, you ponder? Your companions appear to be looking at you expectantly. Let's ask his opinion. Lack answers. Lack, the great and powerful. You elect to ignore him. Laddie tears a page from her book and then scribbles a name down on it. In her small handwriting is written, The Bon Vent. According to Lack, the words are a kind of prayer in the language of the spirits for safe passage when bidding one farewell on a long journey. A farewell said before long journeys. The words could make a fitting appellation for your ship. You're unsure of just how much you ought to trust Lack or his skill with words. But nonetheless, decide to go with Laddie's suggestion. Together, you load up the Bon Vent with the necessary provisions. Preparations for your departure are now finished. Yes. Way anchor. You throw your hands upon the ship's wheel and shout, Way anchor with gusto. Your voyage has begun. Wow, I didn't really need to say anything. Though your ship had long since forgotten the taste of seawater, it nonetheless cuts through the waves like a fillet knife through fresh fish. It is your first sea voyage. Laddie's eyes glitter as she looks out at the horizon, stretching ever onward over the endless blue expanse. She opens up your homemade navigation map, checking the locations of the islands where the other maidens live. On the island to the south of here lives a beauteous maiden garbed in azure robes, as though the sky itself is wrapped around her. After closing up the map, you grasp the wheel like a familiar old friend and tell the ship where you'd like to go. You now have free reign to sail across the sea as you see fit. New tales await you when you put into port on an island where a maiden dwells. <clears throat> we need to venture south of Omega Isle and search for the island's entrance. Now that our ship is complete, we can sail the seas. Your peace will automatically change on land or sea. And I think I'll wrap it up here because... This game is really, really ambitious.
It really is. And it's making me curious as to how this game is going to turn out. How do I know this? Because I'm going to be putting a lot of my time towards it. Give this game a shot if you can. Product provided by Square Enix. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. It means a lot. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, click the bell. I will see you next time. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out.